Welcome back to Realism Overhaul, a summary of events which happen live on Twitch, link is below. In this playthrough, we finally reached the year 1977, meaning we're at this single deadline I had set up for us. Practically, I'm willing to play through Realism Overhaul without any sense of urgency whatsoever other than, you know, contract deadlines, and this particular year. Now, you're probably well aware of the significance of this year, especially after reading the title of the video, but for the sake of being thorough, 1977 is the year Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were historically launched by NASA. Their mission profile utilized gravity assist with a once-in-a-lifetime planetary arrangement of the gas giants in our solar system, essentially slinging past Jupiter to Saturn to Uranus and finally Neptune before leaving the solar system forever. By the time this launch window came around, I needed to have the technology and infrastructure to send something along the same path as this window doesn't occur again for a very, very long time. And now that we're here, I'm happy to say we are more than prepared for this endeavor. We will be utilizing two launches of our F-1 stick of a launch vehicle, the Comet Banshee, to launch our spacecraft towards Jupiter at first. Our first launch includes Siren 1 and 2, twin spacecraft designed to use atmospheric friction to capture into the orbit of Uranus and Neptune. And for our second launch, we have Queen Bee, a mother craft of sorts with two detachable probes called Bumble and Tumble, you can thank Twitch chat for that, that will also attempt to aero capture into orbit of Uranus and Neptune. Queen B, however, will not aero capture. It will travel further than Neptune, possibly past Pluto, and we'll have to see if that's even a possibility years from now, and out of our solar system entirely. The launch dates for both were sometime around August of 1977, pretty much one right after the other if I remember correctly. We're not really too far behind from where we are in live streams, but truthfully, I haven't been keeping close track to launch dates or keeping up to date with the report spreadsheet. It was more of a priority to me during the early game, but as we've survived that and opened up the game to practically science mode, I've genuinely been enjoying allowing myself to simply play the game without much documenting, other than, of course, recording and making these videos. I've been on top of, sort of, the list of Kerbinauts, as we'll be hiring more crew for the Aurora Borealis lunar missions pretty soon. But yeah, other than that, I've been following wherever my heart impulsively takes me in this game, which is quite fun. I do, however, want to shout out a member of the N9 community, Odin, for the creation and upkeep of a detailed list of categorized launch vehicles and their missions of his own for N9SA. Perhaps we'll make it a public document as a replacement for the ones that I've neglected recently. So Odin, let me know if you want to do that. But let's slow down a bit and get more on track. What you're seeing on screen here is our orbital planning, plotting the interplanetary slingshot burn as precisely as I can with roughly four frames per second. Yeah, these multi-year long plots are pretty taxing on my system with Principia as you can even see with the sped up footage here. But we're holding on to it still, since I honestly think trajectories are much easier to plot with Principia than with the stock system, as you can always see your periapsis for any given planet, even outside of its technical sphere of influence, which is very nice for mapping encounters. The first encounter of which, of course, will be Jupiter, and from there, it's really just a matter of fine-tuning our binormal tangent and initial burn time to slingshot past the planets however we want to. After bringing the trajectory close enough to Jupiter for it to bend, we start targeting Saturn and using its frame of reference 2,000 or so days into the future. Once again getting close, we then target Uranus, and at this point, extremely minute changes in our trajectory are causing absolutely drastic changes to our trajectory out at Uranus. Because of this, once we have our trajectory relatively close enough, it's where we'll be leaving our plot for now. Targeting Neptune at the moment is practically impossible for us here, and is something we'll attempt to do with slight corrections at Jupiter, Saturn, and then Uranus. So that's our trajectory planned. All we have to do is perform the burn with Banshee, and this upper stage is currently extraordinarily effective and reliable. In reality, an analog of early Centaur stages used by NASA. We'll likely be using it for a long time to come, though various upgrades or variants will likely be in the future. It's here, however, where the two-launch mission encounters its first, but hopefully only, problem, albeit a pretty, well, problematic one. Due to poor planning from yours truly, 
Banshee did not have enough fuel to reach the required speed by 15 seconds of burn, a whopping 500 meters per second. This creates a dilemma that leaves us with an obvious solution, which creates more problems of its own. Siren 1 and 2 will entirely miss Jupiter if their systems are not prematurely engaged and bridge the gap in velocity with their own means of propulsion. The Sirens have enough fuel on board to perform this, no problem. The problem lies with each spacecraft's rather large heat shield, designed to, of course, blast into the atmosphere of these gas giants, while simultaneously disallowing its primary propulsion system to fire. Attitude thrusters are also not an option due to the craft design angled away from the aft vector to avoid damaging the communications dish and other sensitive equipment. So no. Instead, Siren 1 and 2 must abandon their primary mission of entering the atmosphere of these planets. They have to detach their heat shields in order to continue. They are now merely flyby probes after this, still aiming to follow the same trajectory past the four gas giants of our solar system, because flying past them is still incredibly valuable for us science-wise, though a lot less so than orbits, still not nothing, not even close. But there will be other missions for that, including Queen Bee, which, by the way, encountered zero problems at all during the Earth ejection burn. Now all craft are on their way through the Voyager window past Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Exciting, though. Everything's in place, and all in all, the hard part is over, and we can all relax. At least for now. There will be plenty more missions to come, but for now, I want to thank you so much for watching, and peace out.